Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Passion Paneur series. It's so great to have you back here with us on the show. And today we have a treat for you. I have Alice Terry on board all the way from Copenhagen. Oh my gosh. <laughs> It is 8 p.m. there, it is 11 a.m. here, and we are gonna rock it out as best we can. <laughs> She's got her wine, I've got my coffee. So just to tell you, you have to make it work. However you have to do it, entrepreneurship is all about making it work. So today on the show, Alice is a world traveler, amazingly creative, oh my gosh, marketer, uh, social media consultant, business coach, you do some coaching in there as well. Um, so many different categories we can, we can like put her in. <laughs> but today for the show, she's going to be here sharing with us her expertise and all things marketing and branding your business and giving us some really great tips and ideas and just some valuable insight on what you can do now in your business to help scale it and things to look forward to in the future. So without further ado, I would love to introduce Alice to the, the, the crew. And Alice, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, I would love to just jump in. Why don't you go ahead and um, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about you and why we should pay attention to you. <laughs> well, you should yeah. From the question. Um, well, my name's Alice. I have been working freelance now for almost five years. Um, I started freelancing when I was living in Guatemala five years ago, and then since then, I have been traveling the world, every different con con continent, and then I'm now based in Copenhagen, strictly because I came back to school, and yeah, I specialize in design, marketing, social media, I, I tend to stick to email marketing design, and, and more marketing areas, social media is like an add-on, mm -hmm. um, and after five years, I've worked with a crazy amount of different clients from fashion to beauty to tech to the art to medicine to business there's really no limit I like to specialize in nonprofit work ethical businesses vegan sustainable this kind of thing because I like to go to sleep at night and feel good about the work that I do it's mm -hmm. not just making money it's about feeling good about what you're doing for work and yeah I think that's my introduction, if that's okay. That's amazing. That, oh my God. Okay. So off the bat, I have so many questions already. <laughs> Should we just jump in? Yeah, for sure. Okay. okay. So first of all, you totally caught me off guard with, first of all, your client list, like the different industries that you yeah. work with being a freelancer. Okay. So my first question is, how did you manage all of that on your own? Um, if I'm brutally honest, which I will be during this whole thing, um, I started freelancing when I was in a desperate time. I was living in Guatemala. I was working for some nonprofits, earning the local currency or volunteering. I didn't have any savings or anything. And I am a graphic designer by trade. I went to school for graphic design and I was like, I've always wanted to work independently. And I started freelancing, um, from Upwork I'm sure a lot of people listening probably know the, the platform yeah I, have, I think I, I knew someone who was using it to hire someone they're like oh you should check it out like there's lots of design jobs I was like oh could be nice to earn some extra money you know I want to travel I want to earn something while I'm, whilst I'm in Guatemala so I started there and Upwork you you can obviously select the job you want to apply for but every client is from a different background mm -hmm. and first client I ever took was a dance shoe company which was nothing I really knew anything about but it was to do social media and consulting so of course I knew that aspect and then it kind of snowballed and every client is different and the first couple of years I was so desperate to learn how to be a freelancer and work independently and manage my schedule and understand how it was to have a business that I didn't care where the client came from or what background everything was a learning curve I've had realtors I've had people working in dental practices I've had lawyers Everything was so different, but I was learning something about the industry. And also I brought my expertise to the table as well. So I found it interesting. And it was only maybe after three or four years where I was like, I felt like I could be a little bit selective with who I worked with. And that's why I took the route to be a bit more niche and only work with nonprofits or 
a company that was a startup that was giving back to a minority group or they were sustainable or vegan or something where it felt good to work with. So yeah, this is why it's so wide. And I've also kept clients from right at the beginning and now I'm narrowing it down and I try to be a bit more selective who I work with. And that's why it was so wide at the beginning. I love that though. And the fact that, so, okay, so let me ask you this. Was it, when you made the decision to go niche, was that still scary or were you so confident and just sure, like this is, like, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to focus, that it was okay. Um, I think it's definitely scary for business owners to really go down that niche market, but also when you become niche and you target to one specific audience, that's when you can really narrow and target your marketing as well. So right now I'm specifically looking for like health and wellness business owners because I'm, I'm really interested in this and like the vegan, the health and wellness and natural, it's very interesting for me. And I've worked with a lot of previous clients. So all my marketing is targeted to these business owners. And it kind of makes it a little bit easier. Like you're not just kept with a, a wide net. If you narrow it down and you know who to target, you can put all your energy into this one market. Whereas before it was like anything, anyone that wants to pay me, I'm down. Right. So now when you make it niche, it's a little bit easier. That's interesting. I never would have thought of that. <laughs> It's only, I only learned that in the last couple of years from like watching other people in the industry who are like, oh, I really target my energy into this one particular market. Right. Like I, I, I had people that I've traveled with and met as friends who are like, oh, I only work with lawyers or I only work with realtors and all their marketing is targeted that one industry. And that's where they put all their energy. And that because they're an expert in that one niche, they get a lot of clients in that one niche. And that's, where, that's the trick because if you're catching a wide net, you're not an expert in any field really you know yeah. I can't be an expert in a beauty industry and also a dental industry it's really wide but if you have only beauty clients then a beauty a new beauty client like oh yeah I want to work with you you have so much great experience that makes so much sense so how are you finding your clients now are you still on Upwork or is it purely referral based or what's your your method well, I'd say right now, maybe 30 to 40% of my work is from Upwork because I still have my profile. And I've been on there for five years and I have a great profile. I have great ratings for my clients from before, but also I have my website and I also have LinkedIn and social media. So, and also referrals as well. So a lot of my clients will refer them to their friends or business partners or whatever. Um, so it really depends. I'd say 30% is on Upwork. Everything else is referral and from my website and just from doing something like this people have heard of me i also i'm quite active on facebook groups as well there's a lot of people out there who are seeking information on facebook groups and i'm always quite active and like replying and like putting my head in and like oh maybe i can post something about this or a logo i don't know something like this so yeah oh i love this i love it okay so speaking of facebook groups um yeah. we actually have a we had a, a speaker a few weeks ago actually who she has one of the fastest growing Facebook groups on right now. And wow. so for her, you know, it was when she started it, it was because she was so over consumed with all of the Facebook groups out there <laughs> and wow. trying to divvy yeah. up her attention and be, be, you know, active in the groups. How many groups are you, would you say you're, you're a part of that you can actually, you're, you're engaged with? Oh God. I completely understand that pain because Facebook as a social media tool is so overwhelming and the amount of Facebook groups is insane. Yeah. I think I'm probably a part of 50 Facebook groups and they're all linked to entrepreneurs, social media, like business babes, boss babes, you know, like all these kind of things. But the ones that I'm primarily active on are probably like five to six. Okay. And the ones I'm active on and the ones that I continually post and check in on is because when I do post something, I get like 50 replies or 50 comments. And I know people in there are active and I'm like, okay, I want to post in here because I know I'm going to get a response. And are those responses job related or just questions or yeah. just, these are maybe people just in the same industry or somehow related and they just want to give their opinion or nice. I mean, it's very occasionally that I will get people email me directly and be like, Oh, I, I saw you on this Facebook group. I, I loved your work. I checked you out. Like I'd love to work together. But normally it's just business owners like myself or freelancers who just want to exchange knowledge and share their opinion. 
and that's so comforting to know especially when you work alone as a freelancer to know that you have these platforms and these groups of women women or guys who want to support and give their opinion that's so valuable especially right now with what's going on in the world <laughs> and not to spend too much time with covid and quarantine and everything but the fact that a lot are all live events have been cut you know networking so it's all moved online so having those places you can go to where you can share ideas still connect with people that sort of thing is so valuable yeah god yeah as I, the last two months i feel for me has probably been the most challenging of my freelance career um simply because i, I moved to copenhagen for school and i changed my whole routine my whole life changed. I now, I'm not traveling anymore. I'm, I'm purely based here. But then to be kind of locked into my apartment for the last two months with very little social interaction. My, I, I came to Copenhagen for school. My school came completely online. And I was like, wow, this is hard. This is very difficult. And without like these platforms to communicate with other designers and freelancers and my friends and whatnot, like I, I would really be struggling. I'd really be lost. And it was in the first few weeks of quarantine where I was like, okay, like I really need to focus my energy. I really need to hustle. I need to put all my energy into like my business and then just let it happen. I mean, it's a global crisis. You, there's not so much you can do personally. Like it's very hard. It's difficult. No one's really lived through this before. You don't know what to expect. You know, mm. you just do what you can. So how has business been for you the past few weeks, few months? Well, of course, I lost clients in the beginning, which I, I fully anticipated. Um, I lost clients in Asia to begin with back in January. And then as that happened, I was like, this is going to happen in Europe. And then in America, I'm going to prepare. Yeah. And I think the first few weeks, I just really focused my energy on my business and what I was looking for from a client and how I could also support my existing clients um, during this time with business support, um, helping them with their strategy for the future. But also talking to new like business owners, women who are at home, who are like, oh, I, I'm at home a lot now. Like now I could start a new business and now I need a logo or marketing support. And I was there to help them. And I was also giving away freebies from my website, like templates for email marketing, that kind of thing. I ran a competition for a logo and rebranding. So I was also supporting people as well and also gaining new clients during the process. But it was kind of like giving, taking, giving, taking, which is super nice. And yeah, it, it's a difficult time, and but every day you just take it as it comes. I, I mean, I'm not drowning, but yeah, I'm grateful for the clients that I have, and yeah, it just is what it is. True. <laughs> Absolutely. I can't take more to that. Like, I, but I can't change it. I've done everything that I can, and it just is what it is. <laughs> It's true. I mean, at some point, I think we all just have to kind of just throw our hands up and just say, I am doing the best I can. That's exactly. Day. Yeah. Every day is going to be different. And I'm a big believer of that as well. Like if you put all your energy in and you know, at the end of the day that you've done the best that you can, mm -hmm. then don't be so hard on yourself because like, it is a global crisis. It's a pandemic. So of course, like what else can you do? You do the best that you can that day and then you go to sleep and then you wake up. It's a new day. Carry on. So true. So with our entrepreneurs, side hustlers that are watching this right now, who are, you know, they, they, might, they might be at home just trying to figure out what am I going to do with my business right now? I'm still growing and I'm still trying to get it off the ground. What are some, some tips you can give them, some ideas as far as um, maybe through email marketing, keeping that connection to their current customers who they may not be able to see face to face? Yeah. That's a really good point. That would be the first thing I would suggest is email marketing and social media. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are sitting at home. They're on their phones a lot. And so this is a great opportunity for business owners to get in front of the camera on Instagram Live, Facebook Live, talk about the business, um, explain what's happening with their business, and also reaching out through email marketing and social media platforms. This is a time where you can be very present with your customers and really connect with them as well, understand what they're struggling with and how you can connect with them. And I also think this time has been really amazing for business owners to kind of sit back and think like, where do I see this business going in the next year or two or in the next five years? It's a great time to kind of brainstorm and where do you want to take this business? Is this going to affect my business in the long run? Like how can I overcome this in the future? And maybe looking at different target audiences that you want to reach to. And you have this free time at home now to really address this and do your research and explore different options as well. And you should be really grateful at this time. I know it's such a, a burden 
but also be, be grateful because I know at the beginning I was really stressed and <laughs> so anxious every day waking up like oh my god the hell but then I was like okay I have all this free time I can't go out drinking to restaurants every night with my friends you know I have this time to sit and think about my business and where I want to be in the next five years regardless of corona or whatnot mm -hmm. so I think this is also good with email marketing is that strictly just you know a newsletter once a week or you know well probably probably more than once a week now but what kind of strategy should they be incorporating for email marketing um it really depends on your business at the time so for example myself as a freelancer who has a small creative agency I will only send one newsletter every week and it's and I only send email marketing with content that's relevant and it's not it's quality content mm -hmm. it's not just because I want to send something out because your readers aren't going to be interested if you're not like giving them something that they value you know so maybe if you have an e-commerce store or you're also a freelancer you, you have a product or a service you need to talk about that service that you're selling um, make the reader feel like they're going to gain something from reading this newsletter maybe you have a freebie maybe you have a discount maybe you have a free webinar coming up something that you're going to give away to the reader but don't just send email marketing for the sake of it because that's how you lose uh subscribers if you're just sending them for the hell of it people are it, you're going into that inbox and it's private you know you want to give them something valuable so i always recommend this um I also find with email marketing, if it's coming from like a freelancer or like a in small independent business, is to be personable, like personal for the situation. Like you can talk about Corona, how it's affecting your business and what you're trying to achieve during this time and just be honest as well. So the readers can also relate to you and kind of you're on the same wavelength and you're having that open conversation. I love that. That was, that was my next question, actually. If you should reference Corona, COVID, quarantine, all of that in your, your wording, or a little over it already. <laughs> I mean, I can definitely probably feel now like it's been two months on. People are like, oh, even I don't, I'm not reading the news right now because it's just like so much Corona talk. Um, but if it's relevant to your business and what you're doing, then yeah, talk about it. It's important to you. It's affecting your business. Then why should you not talk about it? And I've been seeing a lot of businesses on social media and email marketing talking about Corona and what they're doing to overcome it how they're managing, how they're going to move forward from this, what's going to happen in the next three, four months. And I think that's important to the business as well. If you're a small business owner and Corona is affecting you in such a way, tell your customers that they're going to want to know if they're an active follower of you, they want to, they'll want to know. So why not? Why would you not talk about it? Oh, that's a good point. Okay. And then what about as far as social media goes? I think the same as well. I think maybe not so heavy. Don't, it's quite a, dark subject right now people don't want to keep reading about it but I think if it is important to your business then it's important to talk about it and I know in my own social media I've been talking about it too but not every day we want to keep it light <laughs> people don't want to keep reading about it so of course absolutely so for those entrepreneurs those business owners who maybe they don't have a list or that big of a list and they're using social media predominantly what are some ideas you can give them as far as helping well, to create content and then boost, you know, their, their traffic, their engagement. So probably a lot of business owners don't want to hear this, but the one thing I find works the best is if you get onto stories, you're as a person, you're present and you're interacting human to human because every time I go on my stories with myself and I'm talking about my business or some hints and tips for a business owner, people love this. People love to see human face on their social media it's true and I can't deny it I, I for the first two years I'm running my own company I hated being in front of the camera in fact there was no photo of me on my website not one bit it wasn't until I was traveling in Bali and I met other like digital nomads that were doing the same thing they were like Alice you should have your face like people want to relate to someone and you should be on social media you should be present and I was like hmm interesting and I did a whole like photo shoot. I put photos of myself on my website and it's true. It changed the whole dynamic of my company. Like as soon as someone saw my face and my brand and they went onto a call like this with you, they're like, ah, it all linked together. And I was part of the brand. So 
I always say put a face to a brand. Even if you're a small business owner, go into stories, talk to your customers, ask for their opinion, have this open conversation, this dialect. It's important because that's what people are on social media for. They want a connection. They want to see someone. They want to like feel like they're having a conversation. And this is really important. What if that's just not possible? Like the business owner is like, no, I cannot do that. Could it be a staff member or, you know, sure. uh, they're able to, you know, have someone, a customer or a client yeah. do something? Yeah. Okay. Any human interaction. Yeah. A customer like saying, I love this brand. Like I love this product. I've been using this. Blah, blah, blah. Exactly. A staff member. Exactly. Just human interaction. Like someone. It's not just constantly product and pushing selling. That's perfect. Because I, I can already hear some of the business owners who are watching this who are like, I'm not getting on camera. <laughs> no, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I was like, I completely understand because I was like that for the first two years. And I'm still like that. It really takes me a lot of energy to go in front of the camera. And I hate it. I really hate it. I find it so cheesy. And I, I know a lot of people in the industry are really like, I love being in front of the camera and they're doing like live videos every day. And I'm just like, oh, no. <laughs> But if you can do it like once a week, it's still something, you know? Yeah. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> so now before we started this interview, this call today, we had a really quick um, just chat. And what really came up and struck me was inspiration. Where do we get it from, from outside sources and really just trusting ourselves? So using inspiration for for one piece of it, but not relying on it. I would love for you to talk more about that and, and, and your, your process. Yeah. So as I said, before we jumped on the call, um, this is definitely an unpopular opinion. Um, and I've always been like this from when I was studying graphic design in school. I, I'm very overwhelmed by how much inspiration there is already existing in the world, like on social media platforms, like back in the day it was Tumblr, overwhelmed my face you know I was overwhelmed by how much beauty and inspiration there was everywhere where I look and I take inspiration from everywhere like my friends traveling music it's crazy so for me as an individual I tend to take a step back and I tend to indulge in creative projects by myself to explore my creativity because when I spend a lot of time on social media I start to doubt myself, my creativity, where I am in my business. And I'm like, ah, I'm like screaming inside and I hate it. I hate it. So I know it's different for every single person. And I know a lot of designers out there take a lot of inspiration from other designers and they follow them religiously and they like relate to them. and They talk about them a lot, but I just, I'm very different in that regard. I feel, and I try and take inspiration from this closer to home. So like I said, like my friends are a huge inspiration, like my surroundings, like cookbooks, my hobbies and like little things where I'm living, if I'm traveling, it could be like I'm traveling in Italy and I take inspiration from some typography from some wall art. It's just, I try and keep it close to home and yeah. So I don't have any like creative idols as such. Obviously my social media is blowing up with amazing people are doing amazing work every day. And of course I'm on social media every day, but I do try and limit it. I do. And I can understand from a, a business owner who's just starting out where it's just so overwhelming and you, this is down to my self-esteem as well. Like it can be overwhelming where you're like doubting yourself, like, Oh, I'm not as good as this person. Like, how do I get this way? Like, what? and I think it's good as well to, to compare yourself and like, Oh, maybe I could try this and do this to become better in this area. I think this is really good because that's what business owners should be doing. But also if you're feeling overwhelmed, take a step back and do what you do at home and what you find passion from and creativity from don't drown out like all the social media. I think it's too much sometimes. And imagine before social media, what were designers doing? You know, they were taking inspiration from that. They were going to the park, they were reading books, reading poetry. They weren't on social media. They weren't like comparing themselves to other artists and designers. So that's why I also like to go back and like put loud music on and like, I don't know, just let my imagination run wild, you know? I love it. It's so powerful. It's so important. And you're right. I mean, before all of that, before technology, people went outside. They read a book. They, had they went traveling. They traveled. They, yeah. 
teachers, they spoke to different people and they took inspiration from that. And I think that is so crucial to being creative, really. Yeah. It's not just about social media, for sure. I love it. So I would love to know, what is your routine like, your, 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 your daily work routine? Oh, God. <laughs> well, <laughs> every day. Anyone who's watching this who's a freelancer will definitely vouch for this. So I love to say I wake up at half eight every morning and I do 30 minutes of meditation and 30 minutes of yoga. But you know what? <laughs> it's just not like that. <laughs> Sometimes I wake up and I feel like shit. I don't want to do any yoga or meditation or anything. I want to drink some water, take a coffee and sit and write my emails until 12 o'clock. And then every day is different. And that is the beauty of being a freelancer. Um, pretty much the first thing I think of when I wake up is I need to check my email. I need to see what clients have wrote me from the West Coast because obviously there's a massive time difference. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then I reply super quick. <laughs> and then once my eyes are fully open, I'm like, oh, okay, now I can stop my day. I've answered those emails and I'll like wake up, get my breakfast, answer some more emails. I'm at school right now. So, and it's a full time course. So, a lot of my time is dedicated to my full time course. So, I'm also very active doing that. But I do spend a lot of my time, like in the day, like working on projects, answering emails, looking at new clients, um, trying to be a little bit active on my social media accounts. Mm -hmm. And then also spending time with friends and loved ones as well. And like doing some like passion projects, because that's also important to me as an individual. I'm not just my work. I'm also everything else in my life, my school, my friends, my family. So I also like to dedicate time each day to that too. I love that. Yeah. Um, Every day is different. How many clients do you think you, you have on average or do you, can you manage? Um, I'd say at any given time from the beginning until now, um, when it comes to like social media clients, it's like rolling every month. Mm -hmm. When it comes to like logo and branding clients, it's normally like a six week project and then it's finished. Oh, okay. So it, it really depends. I'd say anything from 10 to 15 at a given time. But I also have clients that I don't hear from for like two months, three months, and they pop back up and they're like, oh, I need something else, I need something else. Um, the one thing I always say to clients, I'm like, oh, do you have enough time for me? I'm like, I will never say no to a client, especially if it's someone I've worked with before, I really enjoy their work. Mm -hmm. I will find time, wherever it means I have to stay up until 2 a.m. to figure out the project or the work. Yeah. Because it's my business, it's my work, it's important to me. And if I like the client, I have a good connection with them, I wanna work with them. So I never say no to a client unless it's not a good connection and it, I'm not the right person for the job. So yeah, it definitely changes. That's good. That's good to know. Um, and then it's, oh, I just lost my, I had a good question for you too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I hate when that happens. <laughs> I hate that. It's the worst feeling. You're like, oh, it's right there. <laughs> a minute. Give me a minute. <laughs> okay. It might be gone. Back when you least it, yeah, it's gonna come to me at like three a.m. <laughs> My time. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's completely gone. Okay, um, no, but what I did want to say was that I'm I'm happy to hear that you you do divvy up your time. That it's not like what you said. It's not all work. You are finding yeah. time for those passion projects, for other things that bring you joy and spending time with friends and family. That's so important, especially when you're by yourself. You know, when you are yeah. you're working alone, you have, you have to, have to, have to find, and it's totally overused, but balance, whatever that means yeah. for you. Exactly. That's so, that's also why I went freelance because prior to being freelance and living and working in Guatemala, I was living in London, working in a corporate head office for a fashion companies. And I was working like, crazy amounts of hours I was stressed and I was like 23 I mean no 23 year old should really be stressed and I just wasn't living life it wasn't the life I wanted to live I didn't see myself doing that for the next 10 years so going freelance and having my own schedule that's why I say like I work until 2 3 a.m because it's my choice it's my work I cho I'm choosing to do this no one's putting a gun to my head being like you have to do this like now or you're fired okay. it's it's my own choice and that's why I like it so much it's my own freedom freedom I love it <laughs> <laughs> all right my dear. so as we wind this up any last words or drops of wisdom you want to impart on us there's only one thing I would say to any 
budding small business owner who's like, do I take that leap? I've also, in the last few years, um, I had a lot of people writing to me on LinkedIn and my website being like, I'm kind of considering going freelance. I just don't know if I should take the leap from my full-time job. And I completely understand that it is scary, but I think you have to look inside of you and think, is this for me? Is this what I really, really want? Like, where do I see myself in five years? And if it's being freelance and working remote, do it because it will never be the perfect time. It will never be the perfect time. Like, oh, I'm working full time to save money before I go freelance. Doesn't exist. Do it because time and life is so short. And if you're going to do it, just do it once you can. Don't wait another five years. Don't wait 10 years. Do it and struggle through. It'll be worth it. I promise. That's my, that's my only part of wisdom. I don't even is that, I don't even is that wise. That's my only part. <laughs> that was perfect. Okay. Yeah, I love it. Okay. Last question. Because it is the Passionpreneur series, I have to ask. Have okay. you found your passion? Huh? Say that again. So are you Have you found your passion? Oh, God. In life? Yes. In life, yes, I think so. I have lots of passions though. I get very easily excited over anything. I get <laughs> oh, we have a lot in common. <laughs> how, how it's measured, but I'm very passionate about very small things. So I, don't, I get excited over ducks in the park. I don't know. <laughs> Nothing is wrong with that. Don't let anyone ever tell you if something is wrong with that. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I think... I would like to think so. And I do think being freelance and being a business owner, it does it allow you to explore these passions. And that is the beauty of it. And that's why I enjoy it so much. And I've been doing it for the last five years. Yeah. So, yeah. Perfect. Alice, thank <laughs> you so much. This was so good. <laughs> thank yeah. you for having your whole day and still staying up for with us. <laughs> we really appreciate it. And you guys, so you know, on the email that follows, you'll have all of Alice's information, um, her website, Let's Love Sundays, which I love, by the way, as well. Like, and just really quickly, what does that mean? Ah, okay. Yes. I get this question a lot. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit unusual. When I was working in a corporate head office, um, maybe some people who are watching can relate to this, having the Sunday blues, where you're sitting there on a Sunday afternoon, you're like, oh, I have to go back to the office tomorrow. The anxiety the negativity and it kind of like builds up and I had this every Sunday for like three four years straight and I was like oh and it was kind of like when I went freelance it was like I don't want to have this feeling where I'm dreading a Sunday Sunday is like the free day it's the weekend I want to love every day mm. like I don't want to dread the Sunday coming so that's kind of where it comes from let's love Sundays let's not dread them <laughs> yes agreed no Sunday blues no Monday blues Exactly. No more of that. I love it. Well, you guys, you'll have all of Alice's content information. Stay in touch with her. Um, check out her website. If there's anything on there, that is, is there anything coming up that you're offering or you want to share any upcoming events yeah. or things? I, I have some digital products, which I, I can share the link with you um, for a free email template, that kind of thing. So I can share with you and they can have access to. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alice. I really appreciate this. You have no idea. <laughs> this has been a <laughs> Thank you for having me. Absolutely. All right, you guys, that is it for today's episode. You will see more of us very soon. Stay tuned and keep living and doing whatever your heart calls. Thanks, you guys. Bye, Alice. Bye.